Hi, I'm David Cate of David Cate Photography, and today I want to process an image that I recently took in Maine. It's of a tidal pool, which is not my typical kind of photography, but um, as I'll explain on the other side, uh, it's an interesting photograph, and um, we're going to process it today. I just came back from a trip from Maine. Uh, it was a trip that was not really a photography trip. It was a trip that was uh, for personal family reasons. But I was able to get out and do some shooting. And I have kind of a fun image here that I would like to uh, process. It's of a tidal pool, so it's not my normal stuff. Um, the day that I was at uh, Two Lights, which is where this was taken at, Two Lights in Cape Elizabeth, um, Maine. Uh, it was kind of a cloudy day, but it was a bright day. And typically when the light is um, strong and flat, which it usually is in summertime, especially in the middle of the day, I generally tend to focus more in on intimate um, subjects. And that was the case this particular day. And this particular day here, I focused in on the tidal pools because uh, Two Lights is well known. Um, it's a rock outcropping that, that goes out into the ocean. And um, at low tide, you get a lot of tide pools. And so my family and I went there. And my daughter also does photography. And so she was taking some uh, film um, shots of tidal pools and I had my uh, Sony and so I was taking uh, digital and so here's a tidal pool image here that I would like to <coughs> do some processing more than I just wanted to quickly walk you guys through um, kind of what my process is for doing something like this it's not a typical landscape so a lot of the things that I would do for a landscape I wouldn't necessarily do for this particular image uh, I like the image because, basically because there were all these trapped air bubbles here in this green algae, which I just thought was really, really neat. And then you've got this beautiful um, um, seaweed right here, and you've got all these different barnacles and stuff floating around. So it's a typical tide pool. Um, the only thing that's missing is some mussels and um, some periwinkles and limpets, which I don't see in this particular image. But again, I was attracted to this image because, number one, the colors. Um, number two was the textures, these beautiful green strands right here that you can see. If I come in here, you can see the beautiful green spans and then these gorgeous bubbles in here that are just... Uh, what attracted me to this particular tide pool and this green against this red of the rock is just absolutely gorgeous now this image was taken at f16 uh, at 50 mil and about 1 20th of a second um, at ISO 100 so it's fairly clean even though I'm shooting through water um, the water isn't all that deep because you can see places here where um, some of these um, seaweed pops up through the water so it's not totally um, water but it is still is um, in some places here a couple inches deep at least in shooting through water I'm finding um, especially when you're standing above and you're shooting down through <coughs> even at a uh, small aperture like f16 it's really hard to get everything in focus because the light coming through the water diffracts in such a way that you lose some of that sharpness that's just seemingly the way that it is had I had a shot maybe with a different um, focal length like even at f16 I mean this area right in here is not that sharp um, this is at 100% um, it's not that sharp and it typically would be very very sharp 
but it's not that sharp because again I'm shooting through a couple inches of water and it just diffracts. Um, there is motion in the water, there is some movement and the light just, light has further to travel and it travels um, differently through water than it does through air. So, but there are some, definitely a lot of it, the areas that I wanted to focus on because I had basically focused on these bubbles here. So that's really the subject, if you will, of this. Looks like a very, very busy picture, but basically the subject is really this green mass, this green mass with the bubbles, and then this clump of seaweed right here, which is just beautiful colors. So to process this image, I basically, um, when I import my images, I have a certain presets that are applied and they're not presets as in um, different slider presets but just basic things such as I will do an automatic lens correction that automatically applies uh, lens correction profile so that I don't have to go through and do that and so you can see here that an automatic profile has already been applied to this image and then I come here to the basic and the only things that I tweak here in the basic is texture and vibrance um, added a little bit of texture to this and a little bit of vibrance and the only other thing is the sharpening here because again I'm shooting through water uh, if this was a normal subject I wouldn't have to do any sharpening but because I'm shooting through water and uh, we get some diffraction going on um, I figured that this thing could use a little bit of sharpening so I'm going to bump my detail up to about 40 which is what I will do normally and then down to um, eighth for detail and then masking I don't need to sharpen everything in this picture I just want to sharpen the most important pieces so there we go and again to do the masking you just have to hold down on that little arrow you just press down on your um, left mouse button click and hit your alt key and you can see what the mask is and as you slide along the slider there you can adjust that mask accordingly so I'll mask this at about 50% there we go so that way we get good now one thing I do notice is the whites here are a little bright so I'm going to go up here to my basic panel and I'm going to drop my highlights down yeah, because we got some bright spots here and I want to eliminate as many of those bright spots as possible and I'll do a little bit of elimination up here uh, we got some like bright spots right there that I can get rid of as the lights reflecting on the water and I might actually drop the whites down too yeah there we go do I need to drop my blacks no, I've already got some blacks in there, so let me bump that up a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to bump up a little bit of shadows here. Not too bad. Just a little bit of shadows just to open them up a little bit because they're kind of dark in here. And maybe I'll just bump up the exposure a tad bit, but not too much. Maybe, there we go. Quarter of a stop, maybe. All right, now we're ready to take this guy into Photoshop as I wait for it to open here's another picture that I'm going to start working on here in a bit but here we go so one of the first things I want to do in this picture is there's some things that bug me about this picture and I've got this bright thing right down here that just bugs the living daylights out of me. It's a strand of something. It looks like human hair, actually. And I just want to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Wacom tablet here. And I'm just going to get rid of that little strand. And it's really, for the Wacom tablet, this kind of work is really easy to do. Get rid of that. 
I'm not too worried about some of the bright spots here in the corner because they're going to go away. Uh, especially, or they'll become less pronounced, but I can go ahead and get rid of some of these. Just to reduce some of the distractions. I find a lot of photographs have a lot of distractions and photographers sometimes are not that keen on removing things that will distract from the image and in this particular case I want to distract remove these distractions rather now I might speed this part up just because you guys don't need to see me sitting here going through all this I left this one right here just because it's it's a radial. Again, I was shooting um, F16, and so for me to get rid of that and all the stars is just a lot of work, and it's more work than I want to do. So I'm just going to leave that there because it's the point of interest, I guess. All right. So now that I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit more sharpening because there's a lot of detail in here and I want to bring that detail out. Now I use three different panels and you'll see them open up here. I use um, Raya Pro from Jimmy McIntyre. I use a Dodge and Burn uh, Pro panel as soon as it comes up here from Blake, from Blake Rudis from six, F64 Academy and then I use the <coughs> the um, TK7 Go panel, which is from um, Tony Kuiper. And essentially what I do is I do most of my work in the Raya Pro panel, and then I use the TK7 Go panel to create masks. I find that it's just much quicker and easier to use the TK7 uh, Go panel for mask creation. Uh, luminosity masks, color masks, um, all kinds of other things and you can see all the various different outputs here um, you can make selections which is great because then you can go in and you can do uh, dodge it and burning based on those based on those selections I use uh, Blake Rudis's dodge and burning because if I want to do a particular color dodge or use different brushes they're all right here it's ready to go and it's fairly easy and there's three different methods that he has he has uh, one which is just the dodge and burn brushes and then using curves which is method two then number three is the traditional uh, gray with some if blend going on so then I use Raya Pro for most of my basic work I just find that it's just easier to go there and use it rather than going through all the menus and all that in Photoshop so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into filters and finish and I'm going to go here to detail enhance and I'm going to take the defaults which is a radius of 34 um, maybe I'll bump that down to 32 there we go ah. 32 come on there we go all right and I'm just going to click OK and let that work so here's the panel Here's the sharpening, and you can see if I take this thing off and put it on, but I never take it at 100% because it's just way too sharp. It's just too in your face. And so what I'll do is I'll dial this thing down to about 50%. I find that about 50% for most is good. So we get yeah, just a little bit of detail, but not not like in your face detail. Yeah, that's better. And see how much better that looks without all those white spots? There's still some white spots, but not as many as there was. And there's so much detail in this 
shot. So let's go over here and take a look. See, so some of the green strands kind of come out a little bit, and some of the seaweed right here comes out a little bit. And to be honest with you, it's a little sharper in the corners here than it was, which is great. Except up here, because I was at an angle, um, because I was trying to get rid of the sun reflection. So this was actually further away. Oh, I found a spot right there. Um, that I'll get rid of a little bit later in the spot there. Yeah, I didn't do this corner very well, did I? Anyways, so that's my detail enhancer. So you can see it with it off and with it on. You come in here to here and you can see it off and then with it on. It just enhances and brings out a little bit of that detail, which I find just to be gorgeous. Okay, so. The other thing that I wanted to do in this picture is I wanted to bring out some of the colors, believe it or not. And the colors in here that I wanted to bring out was some of the reds, the yellows, and the greens, just to give a little pop to it. Now, when I do this, it's going to look really gross at first, but hang, you know, hang tight. I'll walk you through what I do. Um, basically, I come in here to my Raya Pro panel, and I'll hit the yellow, and I'm going to hit the green and I'm going to hit the red and oh my god we just have this kaleidoscope of color here so let me turn off the greens and turn off the yellows so let's just deal with the reds because the reds are just neon so what I want to do is I want to come into here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial down the opacity of that red by probably do 40 percent so just a little bit of red not in your face kind of red see it's kind of brown and now it's got a little bit of red and I happen to like color so mm -hmm. now I'll tone this down even more when I'm done with all of the colors so even if it looks a little too bright right now don't worry, it'll be even less bright, less saturated when I get done. Because I'll group all these colors together, and then I'll do it as 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 a group. So that way, um, I get a better tonal um, color range throughout, and everything kind of works together. So that's my reds. So now let me look at the greens. And you can see the greens really kind of come out, especially right down here. So what I want to do is reduce my greens down to about 50% probably. Let me try that. Let me see what that looks like. Yeah, it provides just a little bit of punch there. Not too much, just a tad little bit of punch. And you can see it right, right along in here and right over here. You can see it. Most everything else, like up in here, you don't see it much. You don't really see it over here. You see it a little bit right in there. Uh, right down over here. Get a little bit. Just look in here. But that's not too bad. I think I can live with that for right now. Again, I'm going to tone it all down again. Um, not just here. So now I'm going to go into Vivid Yellows and look at that, it just pops. Boom! Everything just pops. So let's go here to the Vivid Yellows and we're going to mark this thing down to about 40% maybe. Let's see what that looks like. See, it provides a little bit of pop. Not too bad. Maybe I'll go 50 just because I'm going to tweak it down even more once I group them all. So you provide some lights in there. So you can see there's yellows and greens in here and reds. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all these. Control G or Command G on a Mac and it produces a group. And I'm going to call that Color Enhancements. 
Now, if I turn this group off, you can see what it does. The image right now is kind of dull, and this adds a little bit of pop to it. But you can now adjust the whole group based on what you think you would like. And I'm going to bump this down to about only 75%. Yeah, I think that's about right. About 75% looks good. Still looks kind of color garish, so let me bump that down to maybe 60. How does that look? Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so down to 60. So the only other thing that I want to do here is I want to uh, put a vignette in here. Now, looking at this title pool, you're thinking probably the whole thing is the subject, and really the subject of this title pool is really this clump of um, bubbles right here, the clump of bubbles over here, and then this gorgeous seaweed right here. So these three things I really kind of want to focus people's attention on, and not so much on this other clutter through here. So again, stand in the Raya Pro, I'm going to come over here to the filters and finish, and you'll see that there's a manual vignette option here. And what it's going to do is it's going to create two masks for me. One for dark and one for bright. And I'm going to go in here to the dark. I'm going to make this a little darker. There we go. But before I do that, let me do this. Control D. I'm going to make a copy. Um, call that process. No, I can't even spell. I wanted to go up here and deal with these. Where we are at. Yeah, I want to come up here and deal with some of these bright spots just to get rid of them because they're driving me nuts. do too good of a job up here in the corners so I'm going to try to correct that there we go what's this corner down here look like this corner down here looks just fine and this corner over here I worked on that corner earlier this corner up here not much up there so that's good all right so now I'm going to do my vignettes and open up my brush. It's a black mask, and I've got a white paintbrush. And I darken this thing down a little bit. So I'm going to come in here and paint in. Especially want to darken this over here, and this up here. So now I'm going to go into my brights mask. And I'm going to lighten this right up here, and this right through here, and this right over here. So kind of like a little triangle right here of brights. Okay, this is what it looks unvignetted. And that's what it looks like vignetted. And I think that the corners may be a little bit too dark. So let me, this is what's nice about this. I can come in here and I can just open that up a little bit more. There we go. So without a vignette and then with a vignette. And that's pretty much it. So the title pool and a little bit of processing and I think it looks pretty good. So if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below 
and I will talk with you later. Thanks.